Hey, I'm Chris from Make Everything, and today we're making an anvil stump. Check it out. So the original design for this anvil stump came from Doghouse Forge, and they used two by threes and about 100 pounds of sand to make the anvil stand. So I'm just sketching out the dimensions I want and uh, starting to cut up the two by threes. Now these are just basic pine two by threes. I got mine from Home Depot. They're about three dollars each, and this whole project took. 10 two by threes and I had a little bit left over but you can assume it's going to be about you know if you're in the US about 30 bucks worth of two by threes and then the two bags of sand were five dollars each so 40 bucks plus the bolts so you're around fifty dollars to build this and I'm um, cutting all these two by threes to length I'm just using a little stop block this is kind of the simplest part of the operation is just cutting everything to the same length Based on the height of my anvil, I chose to make my stand 28 inches tall. And the Doghouse Forge one, they used one layer of three-quarter inch plywood as the base. And I decided to use two layers of three-quarter inch plywood as the base. The dimensions of the stand when they're finished, it's going to be a 15 by 15 inch square. So I just cut those pieces down to 15 by 15 and glue them together. I'm going to use a Milwaukee drywall gun, which is a collated screw gun to screw that stuff together. If you make a lot of stuff in the shop, it's one of those useful tools that, you know, I use it for drywall, but it's great to have for screwing down tabletops and other repetitive screw tasks. I assemble all the 2x3s in a staggered square border so that they overlap. Uh, every border overlaps the corner, you know, in a different way. And um, I'm gluing every layer so that I don't wind up with any sand leaking out once I put the sand in. And I'm making sure that everything stays pretty square, but at the end of the day, it's not a very precise build. So I'm not that worried about it if anything moves around. I'm using 3-inch number 9 Torx head construction screws, and they just fly through the wood, which is really nice, makes it pretty quick. The top is going to be solid 2x3s all the way across. And now I'm just going to put the anvil on there and lay it out so I can drill my holes for the 5 8 inch threaded rod that I'm going to use as the hold down bolts. I want the hold downs to be pretty tight to the side of the anvil and then they're going to be on an angle once they're tightened up which will keep the anvil in place. So I drill out a 5 8 inch hole in the 2x3s and then I'm going to use some 1 inch by 1 inch square stock with an 8 inch wall as the hold down bars. Just using a step drill to get a nice tight 5 8 inch hole. I want everything to have a pretty tight tolerance because I want to use the tension of the side of the anvil when I tighten everything down to keep it tight in place. And you'll see the way that they kind of camber as I tighten them down once I install everything. And use this little porta band to cut the stuff down to size and then deburr the corners and sort of soften things up on the belt grinder. I had some three inch screws stick out the bottom so I ground them off with a grinder. And now uh, each one of these bags is 50 pounds of sand. It's a little wet so it'll actually compact nice and at first I was using this stick and then I thought to myself there's got to be a better way. So I grabbed my cordless hammer drill and I put it onto impact hammer mode and I just wedge a block on there and it totally worked great to compact the sand and make it really really tight. I want to get as much sand in there as I can and I want it as tight as possible so it really absorbs the impact. This worked surprisingly really well and I got about 90 pounds of sand in the base. Now I'm just building these bolts. This is a, like a build your own bolt kit that Home Depot sells. So it's 5 eighths rod and then it's a nut, a lock washer and a, and a large washer. So I just set these up and make sure everything's nice and tight that I have as much sand in there as I possibly can. Put the anvil on there and you can already feel how solid it is when you hit it. Now you'll see why I kept all the tolerances tight with those rods. As I tighten this down, they're basically going to bend out. If 
following the shape of the anvil, but now that everything's tight, they're just putting a lot of nice tension on the anvil and keeping it really, really solid. And just cutting off those bolts because they were obviously way too long. And this is kind of where it's going to wind up in my shop, so I put a couple shims under it just to keep it from wobbling. got a great ring to it and I can tell it's really solid and the base is going to absorb a lot of impact but I need somewhere to put my hammers when I'm working on the anvil so I'm making this little tool caddy out of just some half inch plywood and a scrap two by three put a little angle on the ends to clean it up screw these together and added them to the base now I specifically didn't glue the top because the sand I think is going to settle so after using it for a little while I want to take the top off and see if maybe I need to add some more sand that's pretty much it for this build it's nice and solid and it really does not move it weighs about 225 pounds altogether. So now this is done. I'll talk a little bit about the anvil. This is a Peter Wright. It's uh, about 125 pounds. I got it at a machinery auction and I paid 45 bucks for this anvil, which is an unbelievable price. I got super lucky. The stand design I got from Doghouse Forge. Again, I mentioned them earlier in the video. Uh, I just want to say thank you to those guys for putting this up. Uh, they posted it about a year ago, talked about the, the reasons why you would use sand and the two by threes. And uh, it's a super simple project. It came out great. I'm really happy that I finally got to do it after seeing it. Thanks again to those guys for making that stuff public and you know sharing that information with the community. Uh, put a link to their Instagram in the description. If you want to know more about anvils and you're interested in blacksmithing, you should check out Essential Craftsman on YouTube. He's got a great channel. He puts out a lot of great content about building and blacksmithing. And they have an amazing video where they launch an anvil up for 4th of July that everybody should watch. I'll put a link to that stuff in the description as well. If you want to see more behind the scenes, what goes on in the shop, follow at Make Everything Shop on Instagram. If you like this video, please press the like button. And if you're interested in more stuff like this, Please subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot more content coming and I uh, hope you're there to watch it. I'm Chris Zepp from Make Everything. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.